Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric Dutria. I'm vice president of the Academy of Air and Space, and I'm former executive director of Clean Sky, the EU body in charge of coordinating aeronautic research with environmental goals after a career as an engineer that I spent in the area of aeronautics and space. I'll remind you that the previous sessions were respectively devoted to climate science, future fuels and technology, and this morning, air transport strategies. In session four, we're going to change topics with uh, most speakers, almost all but one, not members of the sector, but very familiar with it. And uh, together with them, we'll s look at what behaviors will be in the future and what uh, will be uh, their priorities, their behaviors and strategies. So in the world that will have to adapt to new conditions, what future is there for travel? And so what aviation will we want for the day after tomorrow? This is particular, particularly a question for all the young people who are following the symposium. In order to tackle this question, it seemed essential to forget all biases and open the debate as widely as possible. And although we talked about mobility in this session, I wanted to come back to the simple world, word of travel, especially distant travel, because this is what we're going to talk about today, uh, where planes cannot be replaced by anything and uh, where uh, the biggest contribution of air transport to greenhouse effects comes from. And so public authorities have asked publicly the end of the uh, the question of the end of growth or even negative growth for air transport, be possibly because air transport would not be able to decarbonize enough within the time frame uh, that is imposed by the fight against climate change. Or maybe primary energy needs uh, for synthetic fuels, given all human needs may not be available in due time in order to meet requirements. Well, previous sessions, however, helped feed this public debate with a bit of optimism, which is very useful in current times. It is true that the pandemic has called into question the travel habits of, power of a fraction of mankind. But what about tomorrow? There are many prophets and our prophecies are contradictory. We shall see. But at a time when business relations are more and more virtual, there will probably be some definitive and deep changes. And regarding flight shaming, which predates the pandemic, this is a, a disputable attitude. It's more moralizing than moral. And so, replacing the political debate, the collective political debate, with injunctions for targeting the individual. And the term of shame is maybe more revealing of an attitude uh, that uh, has be, has more to do with the psychos than with reason. However, the issue of different travel or even less travel shouldn't be taboo even for the Air and Space Academy, but we need to discuss how to go about it, but we should be able to design a sober, more sober civilization, more frugal, which keeps evolving towards, uh, which stops going towards more of the same thing. And uh, aviation should no longer be uh, there to waste resources. So it's worth wondering why we're traveling, why we're going to travel in the day after tomorrow for Business, tourism, family reasons, studies, migration, some of these uses can be replaced by virtual, at least partially. Others may appear as uh, non-essential, to use a now famous phrase, but maybe doing so you would forget that for people to move around, to get to know the world, uh, that may be imperfect or even that could be open to criticism, but it's an Im essential important in self-development and the qualitative development of mankind. And I think that man has always dreamed of traveling, and I think that it would be a mistake to try to pry it apart from people. However, one may wonder about the future of masterism. Can it be 
apply to the whole of mankind? Could Venice welcome not 30 but 100 million visitors per year without drowning to the bottom of the Laguna? So what future uses, what future sustainable ways of traveling could you imagine in a relatively virtualized world? And what are going to be the implications on air transport, mass tourism, migration, distant travel, of course, all of that is framed by global matters. It's fundamental. Nothing is more globalized by nature than aviation, as we said this morning. But very often, we tend to look at things with a European or even national eye. And very often, European countries have uh, an average or even small size. So it's uh, quite logical to take a European view for when it comes to home insulation, but it doesn't apply to aviation or at least only marginally. But it's not certain that all countries in the world see the future of aviation the same way. It might be a luxury for Europeans who can only, who only fly to spend a fortnight on faraway beaches, but aviation is for others including the, the beneficiaries of distant tourism. Aviation is a crucial aspect of their economy. And for others, yet it's a promise which is yet to be materialized. So you cannot look at the climate issue independently from that. You need to consider the two together, the contribution to global warming and the economic, cultural, and societal role of each sector of human, of human activity. And you should not think in silos either, be they geographical or sectoral, pre-established uh, silos uh, that uh, sometimes people use uh, out of um, simplicity. So we're going to try and take uh, viewpoints from all parts of the world in the latter part of this session. So I will now introduce the speakers of the first part of this session called is travel a civilizational fact? Probably with a question mark at the end. You can read the detailed biographies in the program, so I'm not going to repeat them now. The first speaker is François Gemen. Hello, François. Good afternoon. Thank you. You're a specialist of environment and migration issues, a researcher at Liège University in Belgium and also a lecturer at Sciences Po Paris. You're a member of the IPCC, and I think a lot of people know you because you very often speak in the media about very different topics. And then we'll hear Stefan Gosling. Hello, Stefan. Stefan is a lecturer at Lund University in Sweden. In particular, he studied tourism and its uh, connections with energy and the environment. And then Yves Crozet. Hi, Yves. Bonjour. Good afternoon. Yves Crozet is an economist, a specialist of transport economy, a professor at Sciences Po Lyon and at the University of Lyon. After these three speakers in succession, we'll have a short Q&A session, 10 minutes, then a short break before we move on to the more international panel, which will be moderated by Sophie Voinis, a journalist who will be with us in the meantime. Now I will give the floor to François Gemène.